you've undoubtedly heard a lot in the news in recent years about network neutrality. Now to net neutrality, which has a lot of us here scratching our heads. Basically, the FCC can now regulate how Internet service providers are managing their networks. But what does that really mean to any of us? Hey, I'm Professor Mark Grabowski, and in this short video, I'll explain what the fuss over net neutrality is all about. Network neutrality is also sometimes referred to as open internet, and it is the principle that internet service providers, such as AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast, should all treat data over the internet equally, and should not limit access or charge differently by user, content, website, application, or device. A useful analogy is the electric grid, which is implicitly built on neutrality theory. The general purpose and nature of the electric grid is one of the things that makes it extremely useful. The grid does not care if you plug in a lamp, an air conditioner, or a computer. They all work the same. On the other hand, if someone uses more electricity, shouldn't they pay more than people who use less? Well, that's the crux of the net neutrality debate. As of 2018, the United States does not have network neutrality rules. We used to have these protections, and we may have them again. There's been a lot of policy changes and reversals over the past 20 years due to having different presidents and differing court decisions. So net neutrality is probably an issue that will remain a controversy and be in the news for some time going forward. In this video, I'm going to briefly address both sides of the issues. What are the pros and the cons of net neutrality? And I'll end by talking about what's in store for the future. Will we ever have net neutrality again? First, here are the reasons to support net neutrality. Proponents of net neutrality say it preserves free speech on the internet by preventing internet service providers from blocking lawful online content. They also contend that internet service providers should, should treat all internet traffic equally and be prevented from engaging in anti-competitive behavior, such as slowing down or speeding up certain websites. In addition, proponents say that net neutrality protects consumers from being charged more to access certain websites, such as online video streaming services like Netflix. Here are the reasons against net neutrality. Opponents of net neutrality say that internet service should be free from heavy government regulation, and that the internet has, evol has evolved spectacularly over the last decades without net neutrality regulations. Opponents contend that net neutrality lowers investment in needed internet infrastructure. In addition, they say internet service providers should be allowed to charge extra fees to online content providers that use disproportionately large amounts of bandwidth, such as video streaming services like Netflix. Now, ever since President Trump's administration eliminated President Obama's network neutrality regulations in 2018, there have been indications that both sides were wrong and both sides were right. On one hand, internet service providers are now investing less money in infrastructure. So our internet really isn't improving, it could be argued. Many other nations that do have net neutrality offer faster internet service at lower prices, although perhaps it's a bit like comparing apples and oranges to compare the United States to nations like Japan. On the other hand, the internet faced great increased demand during the coronavirus pandemic, where most Americans were working and attending school at home. The internet performed well, and that was in part because internet service providers were able to manage traffic on their networks to ensure things like Zoom meetings got prioritized over things like video games. So I would say that activists on both sides of this issue tend to exaggerate their claims a bit. That said, the vast majority of Americans do support net neutrality. Although the federal government does not currently mandate network neutrality, it is far from dead in the United States. Many states have started to pass their own laws that would require internet service providers operating within their state to follow network neutrality rules. In addition, 
if a Democrat becomes elected president in the future, we will probably see network neutrality reinstalled at the national level. Finally, regardless of who is president, uh, Congress could always pass a law mandating that network neutrality regulations be adopted. And if they get enough of votes, they could override a presidential veto. So stay tuned. Net neutrality is likely something you will hear about again, and policies could change. Well, this has been Professor Grabowski. Thanks for watching. <music>